we can all together can defeat it and we'll have a win over it one day and very soon you know as our government policies and uh, our honorable prime minister policies and all we are going to overcome this very soon so today we have got uh, ms prempati is our facilitator she is a program chair and uh, i request ms prempati to welcome all the speakers of today's session ms prempati please uh, thank you ma'am Uh, so a very good afternoon to our distinguished uh, speaker uh, dean ma'am professor asha kureshi ma'am uh, my dear colleagues uh, students and participants uh, on behalf of uh, school of nursing uh, gulbuddin university i welcome you all for this live webinar on the topic uh, fighting against uh, covid 19 uh, i would like to extend uh, my thanks to our vice chancellor uh, dr preeti bajaj ma'am Uh, ma'am has is not able to join with us right now as she has some other uh, schedule already fixed up. Uh, maybe ma'am will join us in between the session uh, before the session ends. So we we'll just hope that ma'am joins us uh, uh, in between of the session. Uh, so as uh, we know that today all of us have uh, gathered here for a webinar, which is uh, no the very upcoming uh, the current topic related to the pandemic, which is uh, fighting against the. with uh now uh, so today we have four uh, speakers along with us i'll be introducing one speaker each before the session and uh, we can also have the question answer session uh, after each of the session uh, students uh, faculty and the, uh, my colleagues they can uh, post their question on the chat box i will pick few of the question and we have to, we can have the question uh, after each of the session so as we all know over the last four months if i say in india over the last four months the world has changed irrevocably and the most mentioned word in this last four months if i say about india is corona virus covid 19 we have lockdown we have social distancing these are the most favorite words of everyone irrespective of the age and the one is Uh, now after this uh, covid 19 and coronavirus so uh, as already stated by who that uh, the the covid 19 is going to be a long fight it is not going to end in a month in a year uh, we have they have not specified how long it is going to take to end this fight so it is going to be hard for all of us but it does not mean that it's going to be impossible today in this webinar we all of us are going to gain more insight on fighting against covid-19 physically mentally and smartly uh, so i would uh, like to welcome our first speaker for today's session without taking much time our first speaker for today's session is uh, dr manju dandapani ma'am uh, ma'am is currently working no manju dandapani manju dandapani not jogani okay so manju dandapani manju dandapani she is on pgi Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am is uh, presently working as a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Education PGIM at Chandigarh. Once nurses, executive member of TNI TNI Chandigarh branch. Ma'am has done her PhD from Indian Nursing Council. Uh, completed her graduation and post graduation both from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Ma'am, ma'am has various achievements uh, in her name. Uh, some few of them to name are: ma'am has got the best publication award in 2018 for from PGI MER, best neuro nurse award in the year 2012, second prize award for paper in National Nephrology Conference, which was third, UGC travel grant for ISPN 2019, and Brahminam. Ma'am has been a speaker in various national and international conferences in Florida, Doha, Boston, and Sri Lanka. A main research area for Ma'am is in brain tumor, pituitary tumor, traumatic brain injury, and stroke. Ma'am is uh, specialized in neuroscience nursing. So I uh, welcome you, Ma'am, for this uh, on this webinar today. Ma'am will be speaking to us on the topic staying safety, uh, staying healthy and safe during COVID-19. I welcome you ma'am please you can start with the session thank you madam hope i am audible to everyone 
Thank you, Snath. Yes, Thank you. A very good afternoon to all. First of all, I would like to yes. thank uh, Professor Asha Kureshi, Madam. Like uh, she's our teacher also during my undergraduation and post graduation at AIMS. So I'm so happy and I, I'm thankful to Ma'am for inviting me for this webinar. And uh, I am also happy to see many seniors among the uh, uh, like among the meeting. So uh, and now we, today I will be talking about how to stay safe and healthy uh, during the amid of a COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you, Manju. Like thank you so much. Uh, before talking, I think let me thanks Dr. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Asha Chaudhary, who is here with the full, uh, you know, she is a frontline worker and I think she is on duty and she is attending the webinar, you know. So you are welcome, ma'am. We all welcome you. You are the mm -hmm. first line workers and first line, you know, you're working for the COVID patient. And we are very happy to welcome you here that you are on duty and you are so interested to uh, just, uh, you know, come on our webinar. Thank you so much. So all the people who are sitting over here on duty with a mask and with the PPE and all, we all welcome you here. Special welcome. Yes, ma'am. And we have uh, Dr. Manjusi Pallam, ma'am. If you remember our batchmate in yeah, yeah. from UK, she has joined. So I'm happy to see her as well. And and many many other seniors. Many of them have joined. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ma'am. So I'll share my screen. So is the screen visible to everyone? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So let's start. So today I'll be discussing about how to stay safe, stay safe and healthy in the amid of COVID-19 pandemic. So we all know that COVID-19 COVID is coronavirus disease, which was originated in 2019, December at Wuhan, China. The common symptoms include fever, dry cough, breathing difficulty, and some of the mild symptoms include fatigue and pain and nasal congestion, diarrhea, etc. And uh, it has a mortality of 3% and 80% of the patients recover from the disease. And it mainly affects the respiratory system by resulting in a mild to severe rate of pneumonia. And uh, we, as Madam was already telling, since um, March, we are in a new and different phase of life because of COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we had entered on 24th March with the lockdown, first phase of lockdown with 500 cases. And today we are starting with the fourth phase of lockdown with one lakh cases. And uh, so we can see that the cases are skyrocketing and uh, the lockdown uh, will be lifted in another few weeks. And we need to, we need to learn to live safe and to prevent spread of COVID and to stay healthy. So today we will be focusing about how to spread COVID, uh, how to stop spread of COVID and stay safe and how to stay healthy. So uh, a patient uh, with COVID, when they breathe out, talk loudly, especially loudly, sneeze or cough, aerosols are generated. These aerosols contain coronaviruses, which can stay in air for hours together in difference and once it falls down uh, on nearby things or the various surfaces, it can stay even up to many days also. So COVID spread from person to person through aerosol contamination or direct contact. So as we already told, it can settle in various surfaces like newspaper, cardboard, steel vessels, glass, money, outside mask and different duration of time. Like in paper, it can sit for three hours. In stainless steel, it can stay for two to three hour days. And outside the surgical mask, it can stay up to even seven days. And it can spread from one person to two to 2.5 person. Or one infected person can infect two to two, three person. So as I told, it can be uh, spread through direct contact or indirect contact. And the best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus. So the people at high risk, high risk include people who are having travel history to from affected state or country, or the family members or any contacts of patients confirmed to have COVID-19, and people who are 60 years of age and above, 
and people who are having medical problems such as high BP, diabetes, heart problems, respiratory diseases, asthma, cancer, patients on immunosuppressants, etc. They may develop serious complications. So when we talk about COVID-19, it can affect everyone, everyone from all walk of uh, society. We have seen that it it is uh, it has not left the royal family in Britain, even and even till the slums in Mumbai and uh, different parts of country. So everyone is responsible to stop <coughs> spread of COVID and stay safe. So we know that it uh, this pandemic affect the core of the societies by losing lives and in, uh, inducing human suffering. And it results in human, economic, and social crisis, and finally, a global health crisis. So it's very important for us to stay safe, stop spread, and stay healthy. So what are the major and common measures that we need to adopt? It includes hand hygiene, social distancing, respiratory etiquettes, wearing face masks, and cleaning and disinfection. So these are all things we know just to organize and discuss once again and remind you uh, remind you all once again so that we can practice in it in real life. So when we talk about these measures, we know that these, these were some of the measures we were not already practicing and they're new to us. So uh, with this lockdown, by this so many days of lockdown, we must have learned this habit. I mean, if we have not learned, we have to learn and we have to commit and sustain as WHO has already declared how long it's going to stay. So to learn any new healthy habits, we have to unlearn at times some of the uh, learned habits and then we have to be disciplined and consistent and we have to make a conscious effort to sustain. So it is like start from wherever you are and whatever you have. So when we think about all these habits, commit 30 days because it said that when we do any activity for 30 times, for 30 days, it will become a habit or part of our life. So make it a daily practice. Start simple and remind ourselves that we need to stay with it and stay consistent So and be a COVID smart but not COVID yet. And so to prevent coronization. <coughs> So the first measure that we were talking was about hand hygiene. Studies show that we touch our face an average 23 times per hour, including nose, eyes, and mouth. So the first step is not to touch our face, including eyes, nose, and mouth. Wash your hands whenever hands are visibly dirty and whenever the uh, other way, if it is not visibly hard, uh, dirty also, wash every two hourly using soap and water or alcohol-based hand wrap. So it has to be done for 20 seconds and ensure that 60% of alcohol is there in the sanitizer. So wash hands before, before after coughing and sneezing, whenever caring for the sick, before and after cooking, eating food, after using toilets, and whenever hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animals. Make sure that we don't That's wear true. rings and that other jewelries on the fingers and do not use artificial nails and cut short our nails yeah. and wash our hands thoroughly, uh, making sure, ensuring that all the parts of hands are being cleaned. So WHO has recommended six steps of hand washing, including palm, back of the palm, fingers, web spaces. So we have to follow these steps so that we can ensure that all the part of the entire hand is clean. So wearing gloves, should we wear a gloves? Gloves is recommended to be worn only while uh, taking care of patients or people who are sick at our house or while cleaning and disinfecting the household. Uh, household. So otherwise routine wear of gloves is not recommended which gives us a false sense of security and we many times may not come to know when the gloves is torn and we may continue to wear, and that can be more harmful. So next measure is social distancing or physical distancing. Rather, it should be known as physical distancing because socially we all are connected through virtual connection we are maintaining. So uh, uh, physical distancing. So what is recommended is six feet. That is, is approximately two meters of physical distancing whenever we go out of the house. 
so we can see this graph with physical distancing we could uh, the number of cases could be brought down the curve could be flattened uh, within the limit of the healthcare system capacity we don't know how much it we will be able to reduce the progress of the case with this lot with social distancing whether we will be able to keep it within the healthcare system facility with a such a high population in india so however we have to continue to have main uh, distancing to prevent spread so this is a graph which is showing from the spanish flu which happened in 1918 so you can see here a first wave and second wave it is said that after the first wave when the lockdown was lifted so the people didn't start did not follow the restrictions but started uh, mingling again that resulted in a higher spike of second wave and this is another graph during the spanish flu in port philadelphia where the lockdown was not imposed and st louis state where the lockdown was imposed you can see the difference in the cases so this kind of lessons what we learned from the history has to be Uh, motivating us to follow that so uh, so when we maintain the social distancing it reduces the number of opportunities to come in contact with the person and the things which are infected so when we are maintaining social distancing if we compare with the normal behavior to 75% if we reduce the contact we can reduce the transmission to at 30 days from 406 people to 2.5 to 1/2 people so if you maintain 70% of the 75% of the social uh, uh, reduce the social distance right? we can reduce the transmission of infection drastically so when we talk about but for the uh, like uh, buying essentials and other things we will have to go out of the home so however avoid contact with sick people but when we go out of the home uh, like we have to keep certain principles in mind work from home as much as possible and have online classes with children as much as possible and go out of home only if essential that's to one member from family consider the person next to you <coughs> may have covid 19 if i think the person who is next to you may be having covid 19 say at least 6 feet or 2 meters from other people this is approximately 2 arm distance and do not gather in groups or religious gatherings stay out of crowded places and avoid mass gatherings more uh, precautions for vulnerable group and avoid public transport now lockdown is still imposed once the lockdown lockdown is lifted we have to really keep this things in mind because now we know the number of cases we have in our country so these are the various measures you can see in a grocery shop in various shops tram metro bus stand in a gathering in office whenever we are standing to buy things in queues and as well avoid the handshaking we can use namaste or we can wave the hands to uh, intimate our uh, presence to others and while shopping do not touch face do not touch phone practice social distancing and wear a mask sanitize the handle of the trolley or basket sanitize hands in between and wash hands whenever you come home after unloading the things as well as when we are within the shop we have a habit of touching and taking everything and seeing so it is necessary but try to limit those touching various surfaces and items so next is respiratory etiquette so we have already talked about the aerosols through which the disease is transmitted so we can cover the mouth with a tissue or cough on to the elbow to prevent spread of aerosols into the air and after coughing discard the tissue in the dust, the bin in the trash properly and after that wash the hands thoroughly next measure is wearing a mask so it is mandatory once we go out of the house we need to wear a mask we can see here these are the countries where the mask was not imposed during covid and these are the countries where mask was imposed so you can see the difference in the number of cases as well as how we can help to flatten the curve by social distancing and wearing mask so when everyone is wearing mask we can reduce the transmission from 70% to 1 1 1 and 1/2% 70 to 1 and 1/2% from a carrier or a infected patient person to healthy contact 
So wearing mask, we have to keep in mind that mask is not a substitute for social distancing and as well as vice versa. And do not use a face mask meant for a healthcare worker like the N95. So because that can uh, result in that lack of support. And do not wear masks for children under age two, people with trouble breathing, who are unconscious or incapacitated or unable to remove the mask without assistance. So how to put on and use or take off mask? So before putting on the mask, wash hands, then ensure that mask is fitting well over the nose, over the sides of the face. It has to be correctly snugly but comfortably fit. The person should be able to breathe and make sure that it doesn't have any damage or fault. And they have to be washable mask material, which will not change the shape or the shape of the material after washing. And avoid touching the mask while using it. And if we touch the mask, wash the hand again or hand dry. And after, while removing, after removing the mask again, ensure that we wash the hand with hands with soap and water or uh, with sanitizer. And why, if it is a ear loop mask from both the side, both the loops, we have to remove it and discard it. And if it is with two strings, while wearing, uh, tie the uh, upper string first, while removing, remove the lower string first. And we also have to take care of the mask. We have to wash it and iron it to maintain the shape of it if it is necessary and keep it in a dry and cool and clean place and throw away torn or damaged mask. We can also make masks uh, using various techniques at house with, from various cotton materials, t-shirts, etc. And so we have seen the strategy of hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette, social distancing and wearing masks. We also have to give importance to our personal hygiene, routine laundry. If we go out and come, try to take a bath and make sure that we wash our clothes. And if we are caring sick people, again, ensure that their items are separately laundried. And then as well as uh, when they, we are taking their uh, laundry and other items, make sure we don't shake it because that can create, uh, generate aerosols. And use a gloves and mask whenever we are handling the things of the people who are in. Next is clean and disinfect. So we need to clean the tabletops, doorknobs, and other surfaces in our house, keyboard, etc., which are often used. While cleaning, make sure we wear a mask and gloves and clean surfaces using soap and water and any routine disinfectant which can be used at the house. And disinfect uh, with any routine disinfectant to kill the germs. And if you are use, uh, you cleaning the items of the people who are sick, use gloves, mask, and separate clothes and a proper polythene cover for discarding the waste. And how to clean the vegetables at home, vegetables and fruits. We can just uh, follow the routine pattern, but ensure that before consuming, especially in raw form, we have to really wash it thoroughly again. We also practice that we keep the items uh, some uh, sometime outside and then we touch them. It's a safe way of practicing because we have learned uh, heard about super spreaders, especially vegetable vendors and fruit vendors. Even yesterday, Ahmed, about 700 super spreaders were out, out identified for the vendors. So it is necessary for us to, uh, though there are no cases so far uh, scientifically reported from the fruits and vegetables, still we have to make sure that we have to wash and take necessary uh, precautions as much as possible. Next is cleaning our phone. Phone is something which we often touch. So it is studies show that 53 times a day we touch the phone. And we have to clean the surfaces of the phone. Uh, we have to clean the surfaces where we keep the phone or we keep the, we should keep the phone only on clean surfaces. And wash your hands, not your smartphone. So if we keep our hands clean always, it is un, uh, it, there is less chance for the phone to get contaminated. And clean the phone, phone with wet, clean cloth. And or uh, alcoholic swipes can be used. The uh, newer recommendations recommend like that. And then Clorox wipes are there, especially meant for cleaning the phone. When we talk about pets, those who are having pet at house, same principles are applicable to pets as well for social distancing. 
though the transmission is considered to be low, uh, the, when we take the pets outside, maintain social distancing, keep them away from the sick people at home, and avoid taking them to crowded places and crowded parks, and monitor the pet also for symptoms. Any symptoms. And when we talk about travel, avoid travel as much as possible, stay home uh, 14 days as quarantine, and follow all the government restrictions which are imposed for the travelers. And the Adogi Setu app is there, which can be downloaded, which, gives, uh, which tells us the uh, area where the COVID people, are, patients with COVID are there, as well as also it gives us a lot of update info. So we have seen how to spread uh, how to stop spread uh, spread of COVID uh, by measure, uh, following hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette, wearing mask, and uh, social distancing, and by cleaning and disinfecting uh, our household activities and some other measures. Now we have to see how to stay healthy because as warrior we have to make ourselves strong to stay healthy. It includes physical health, mental health, social health, and spiritual. Health. We talk about uh, this uh, stay healthy in the house. Like now, there are certain routine change changes in routine has come. So we can make a checklist so that we don't miss out anything. So we can make sure we get up to date information from the official website uh, or the formal website, and we can have a list of uh, local organ health organizations in uh, necessary. We can contact, create an emergency contact list of family, friends, neighbors. Prepare for possible illness and have essential medicines at home. Consider members with high risk, with special precautions. We can choose a room if possible to keep anyone fall sick. And hand washing icon can be placed in various places if we need. And keep sanitizer at the entrance of house. And cope with work <coughs> from home and classes of children. Now, for example, like uh, recently I have heard a lot of complaints from the parents about the teachers, how they are teaching. We may not have to get that anxious because they are also learning a new habit. They will also learn it better and practice it better. And if this has to continue for many time or like long time, and then watch for symptoms and uh, choose for one or two family members uh, who can go out and buy vegetables and other essentials and avoid using public transport if we are using maintain social distancing and avoid touching high touch surfaces. Avoid riding a car with members of different households if it is necessary again social distancing and when we are traveling like that, uh, either keep the window on or AC in a non-recirculation mode. Then physical activity is very, very important. Be active and stay healthy at home mm -hmm. if you are staying at home and uh, like if elderly and all not, no, or not at all going out, they can do various exercises, yoga, and a lot, lot of online applications are there which help us to follow or practice and learn various exercises, yoga, stretching, etc. So, <laughs> can use correctly. so those who can go out uh, to the park, we can uh, go out to the park by maintaining necessary restrictions. And adults, 30 minutes, and children, one hour daily, have to stay active as per WHO. So as I told already, there are uh, various online classes, dances, and um, Zumba dance, and all those things. Play active video games, skipping rope can be used at home. And uh, stretching and muscle strengthening exercise, you can walk up and down the stairs. And, uh, we can choose appropriate things which are possible for us to stay active at home. Even I also practice, so I think every one of you are practicing that already. Now, the third phase of lockdown, we could go out to the park, but while going to park also, we have to take necessary action. You'll see that. And if and we have shifted from our regular work to much of online uh, working from home, online works, so we have to ensure that our sitting posture is properly and uh, break up your sitting at stand up while working at the, on the phone or on the morning. Manju, I just request you to stick to the time. Yeah, yeah. in a few more slides. Sorry. So to continue with, uh, so if you are going out uh, to the park, make sure that um, uh, like the, really it is beneficial for us and visit the park which are close to our house because we know that it is much not crowded and maintain social distancing and play safely when our kids are playing. Don't go to crowded parks and don't use playgrounds. 
and coping with next is coping with uh, stress to have a good psychological health we'll have uh, one more session by dr anu and caring of children next includes so like uh, caring children at home it is little difficult during this lockdown so maintain their hygiene hand washing and schedule their activity teach them household chores and teach them self care skills uh, this is the right time for us to focus on their grammar handwriting we can play with children enjoy family time teach them to make right choices because this really consume time and then uh, limit time with other children and practice social distancing and uh, have virtual connection regarding diet and hydration eat fresh and unprocessed food every day drink day to 10 glasses of water every day eat moderate amounts of fat and oil avoid sugar salt as much as possible avoid eating out avoid overeating since we are at home home most of the time and counseling and psychological support regarding nutrition can be always sought and wise choice of online recipes because we have time we always try to follow that and avoid alcohol and avoid food which are high in sugar and salt adequate sleep is sleep is very important to have effective immune system and have an enhanced and proper mood and improves the mental health so to have a sleep hygiene have a schedule and uh, have a exposure to the daylight to enhance the circadian rhythm reduce blue light and uh, be careful with the nap timings and uh, use relaxation techniques and healthy diet before one hour of sleep it is necessary for us to have spiritual and social health stay connected while staying away through online and virtual connections online spiritual or religious meetings can be go you know continue so for example in our church meetings every sunday and every every day we have meetings so we are not feeling a lack in that to we can reach religious mood as well and if we fall sick seek help or seek uh, advice from the health care workers and if we fall sick again stay separately maintain the social distancing mask respiratory hygiene and uh, check the temperature and take necessary medicine good diet and seek the medical and people at high risk we have already seen who are the which, which are the category elderly and people with other diseases we have to ensure that they continue their medications have avoid going out so so far we have seen the measures to stop spread of covid stay safe and stay healthy with all these measures such as wash hands maintain social distancing avoid touching eyes nose and mouth with face and practicing respiratory hygiene so definitely together we can stay healthy and win the war of this covid follow all these measures that we have discussed so far so the my take home message is that make the make the most of your time during this covid-19 lockdown stay positive and utilize the time and follow the regimen of reentering because we are going to reenter to a, uh, a population like which are having more cases and more exposure so we have to follow strict regimen as the government is going to impose and uh, it is just not an individual responsibility but it is our social responsibility not only that when we are following all the guidelines we are protecting ourselves or our family but we are protecting <coughs> society and the nation so be positive stay, stay safe stay healthy stop the spread and be a covid hero thank you thank you manju thank you so much thank uh, for giving a comprehensive detail of uh, you know what has to be done you know to prevent from covid and stay healthy and uh, i request the other speakers to please stick to your time 20 minutes because uh, we have our program till 3:30 uh, and after that we have another program so please be stick to your time and speak you know uh, accord this that is my personal request to you by folding hand okay Yes, Premati. All the time. Ah, thank you, Manju, ma'am, uh, for serving as a speaker for this live webinar. I think after today's uh, session, uh, I will tell about myself. That I will increase uh, the number of frequency the time I will be cleaning my phone from today. 
as i used to clean it twice a day once in the morning and once in the afternoon so i'll increase the frequency for cleaning my phone also uh, thank you so much ma'am so when planning such an event uh, this is an imperative to gain participation of an expert in this field uh, your willingness to share your time on staying healthy and safe during covid 19 was critical to the success of this event uh, uh, manju ma'am i i have a question uh, can yeah. i Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I think I think Premati, because we are running short of time, she is already taken ten minutes more. Yes. Ma'am. So we can discuss, uh, take all the question together at the end of the okay, session. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. You can start with the other session. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so so moving on, uh, we have our next speaker that is uh, Dr. In, uh, Indu Aneja, ma'am. uh ma'am uh, welcome you ma'am uh, ma'am is presently working as a director in indian institute of healthcare and communication uh, ma'am has completed her phd in psychology and ba in hospital administration uh, ma'am is an advisory board member on national in national human rights commission uh, she is a visiting professor in a number of named institutes a few of them will be iim ahmedabad delhi judiciary academy molana azad medical college delhi university edno Uh, ma'am has conducted various pdp and fdp program for all the school and colleges teacher uh, ma'am is a trained cbt and cdt therapist uh, ma'am is a private psychologist and she has a vast experience of 30 years in the field of health and psychology so i welcome you ma'am today uh, dr anju uh, indu arneja ma'am uh, will be dealing with us on the topic psychological impact of covid 19 Thank you. Uh, so much. Thank you for the session. Am I audible to all? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, thank you so much prembati for giving such a elaborate introduction and thank you so much dr asha to have invited me here for this session uh, i hope i'll be able to do justice to the session and as you said you are wanting me to talk about psychosocial well being of the uh, healthcare professionals i would also suggest certain strategies how do you really cope up with the situation and make sure that you are able to handle the situation impactfully so is my uh, slides visible are my slides visible uh, yes ma'am yes, ma okay great so uh, because uh, just in the morning it so happened that they did tell me that i was not able to project my slides and i was just talking without the slides to them so that's why i am asking you okay so i really understand that this is something that we had never thought of it's a very unprecedented kind of a challenge i think after every 100 years we get to see such pandemics and unfortunately the time we are the, the we are in this situation no doubt emotions are very high and there's lot at stakes especially the kind of uh, you know number of deaths we are getting to hear from across the world it's bothering everybody and everybody is getting affected by it definitely it's leading to lot of anxiety and confusion especially healthcare professionals who are the frontline warrior they are all the more stressed out because they are the one who are facing the brunt of this situation so they are the one who are handling the patients not even knowing how ultimately it's going to affect them or they are going to be you know affected because of the illness some of us i'm sure are overwhelmed with the long Hi, my name is Brian Hall and i'm an engineer at Microsoft. The kind of I created this course called Introduction to Web Development to teach you how to become a web developer. developer. If you've ever wanted to learn how to code, this is the course for you. We're going to teach you how to do things like HTML so you can put content on a page, CSS so you can make it look nice, and JavaScript to make it interactive. Many of the uh, These are all staff members are not even able to go and meet their family. They are staying away from their family for the protection of their family, especially when they are directly involved in care of COVID patient. so they must be definitely missing their family and friends <coughs> also the volume and acuity of the situation is also very you know leading to great stress to all the healthcare warriors who are directly involved in the patient care there definitely will be anger because we never thought that we will have to see something like this and certain places the kind of failures we get to see that leads to lot of frustration among most of us supplies mm -hmm. also of course now things are changing but initially we were really apprehensive about the supplies 
we do get to hear now also that in certain places there is shortage of supply and that leads to further you know apprehension and anger against the system or against our hospital or whatever wherever we are many of you who are directly involved in the intensive care patients when you get to see that you are not able to save the patient due to any reason or maybe the acuity of illness it definitely leads to certain amount of guilt and bad feeling that we were not able to save this patient so common thoughts of anger and anxiety would be that oh this isn't fair why i don't deserve it why am i here in this situation or we don't have enough ppe so i am going to really get infected or maybe some of my team member might get infected and there is no sure shot protocol of treatment even to today we are not very sure of the protocol of the treatment every day we are getting to hear some of the other medicine thought to be effective thought to be useful how much of it is really making sense that that that's what time is going to tell us we may run out of medicine many of you may also have this concern that a time may come that we will not even have enough medicines or enough pp to protect ourselves so again in, in case if the number of patients increases and uh, especially if the patients need ventilator and we also know that we have limited number of ventilators so even that can be a reason for anger and anxiety that in case if the number of the patients are very high and the ventilators that we have fall short then what do we do and where do we go especially when we are getting to see this uh, in the developed countries because all this why we were thinking oh developed countries have all the facilities all the infrastructure so uh, they will be able to handle it being in india with such a large population with limited health resources we always felt that we are going to fall short of it so this worry i think is bothering most of the healthcare professionals that in case if the number of patients really increase tremendously how will we manage them and also there is little amount of you know unrest and unhappiness among the healthcare professionals against the system against the government against the you know against covid against china and again what all because we think somebody has to be blamed for what the situation is so it's true that uncertainty of any situation is bound to create anxiety and anger it's something which is very natural this is how human mind functions to protect itself itself in any crisis situation but let me remind you we don't grow when things are easy we grow when we face challenges i think this challenge that we all are facing right now not only it has lot it has led to stress but it has actually advanced a number of our skills the other day i was listening to uh, prime minister narendra modi when he said that we never made even a single ppe in our country couple of months ago whereas now we are making 2 lakh ppe every day so such thing would never have had happened had this crisis not occurred to us so i understand the severity of the situation but at the same time if i look at the brighter side i think lot of new good things are going to happen not only in healthcare but all over the country in number of other ways so i was listening to this ted talk uh, where the speaker said bhagavad gita came into being in the middle of mahabharata that means the the bhagavad gita discourse never came in a very peaceful time it was in the middle of the battlefield when arjun refused to fight the battle that was the time when lord krishna spoke to arjun and he gave him this teaching of karma and you know this responsibility to fulfill your karma so similarly i think this is a lesson to learn that during stressful period lot of new good things are also going to occur to all of us so very mindfully we have to focus our attention to those things so that we don't get into anxiety or stress now very specifically i have listed down certain strategies for the effective uh, uh, psychosocial well being of healthcare professionals who are directly involved in the patient care or even general also this is going to help anybody and everybody i want to introduce you to a very beautiful concept that is concept of mindless monkey now we all uh, i'm sure you all know that we all have two minds one is rational mind and one is emotional mind so most of the activities that we do during the day they are managed by the rational mind but at the same time there is a small emotional mind that is looking at us like this monkey in the picture that you can see you can see the piercing look in the eyes of the monkey and this emotional mind looks at situations only in black and white for this monkey either things are good or bad pain or pleasure as long as things are good fine comfortable this monkey is happy busy enjoying the moment there is any kind of 
you know threat to existence or any painful situation any stressful situation this monkey gets activated this monkey <laughs> and as a result this monkey starts troubling the rational mind it actually completely takes over the activities of rational mind therefore when we are anxious or we are scared or worried most of our thought process get corrupt most of our actions or reactions also become very absurd it's only later on we get to realize okay i was not behaving the right way but actually we have to very carefully handle this monkey especially in the crisis period so keep this monkey busy and happy keep it engaged so never sit alone never sit ideal keep it busy mindfully incorporate pleasant happy moments in your day to day routine so that you feel relaxed and comfortable at the same time i want to advise you something that will greatly help you is to learn to accurately assess or estimate the risk usually under the pressure of this mindless monkey we have a tendency to overestimate the risk as a result our action and reactions also becomes little absurd and inappropriate for example if i'm scared my reaction to even smallest of sound will be overreaction if i'm scared sight of any person will trigger anxiety in me similarly we need to understand how much of risk i am at like for example for most of us if we are sitting at home we are following all the precautions we are not going out we are not mingling with people that means the actual risk is very very negligible now people directly for them yes the amount of risk is higher but in case they are following the instructions please yes. unmute your please unmute my background noise please unmute sorry when you are on is Can I request all of you to kindly mute your device, please? Please mute your device. Dilpa, okay. kindly mute everybody's device. Ma'am, we are not able to uh, see the slides. The slides are not changing. Is it so? Yes, ma'am. Only first slide is going on till now. I sent so many times messages. Nobody oh, seen the yes. message. Okay. okay, the first slide is showing. Okay, we will see that. Thank you for reminding. Thank you for reminding. Thanks for reminding, Sangeeta. No, thank thanks for reminding. reminding. Yeah, I am Karesh Prasad. इसीलिए मैंने पहले पूछा कि आप लोगों ने स्लाइड देखी नहीं देखी मैं नहीं फर्स्ट स्लाइड फर्स्ट स्लाइड वाज ओके आफ्टर दैट इट डिड नॉट चेंज या ओके लेट मी सी थैंक यू मिसेस प्रसाद थैंक यू सी दी स्लाइड्स नाउ now i can see now it's okay so thank what you what i do i will not uh, uh, i'm not going to this slide uh, slide show because i don't know why it is not taking up just let me try once again if it works so is it working now now it's working oh great thank you so much ma'am thank you for reminding right. so much okay so as i said we have to accurately you know learn to assess the risk so people who are involved in direct patient care they need to actually be very sure that they take good care of themselves for example if they are using proper ppes for example they are taking good care of washing their hands frequently and as often as possible and as soon as they come in contact with the patient or minimizing their con- direct contact with the patient or maintaining safe distance so whatever the guidelines are for the healthcare professionals if they are being you know looked after or followed then i think the risk would be far much less so therefore we in case if we have this habit of overestimating the risk then even this small cat can can look like a lion to us so very mindfully we have to practice this habit of estimating the risk accurately so that we don't get over anxious i am receiving calls from number of hospitals where the healthcare professionals are now being anxious and not only they are being anxious but even their families are now feeling concerned about their welfare because they feel their kids or children are being exposed to the patients uh, with covid plus so they are likely to get infected so in case if the healthcare professional knows that i am taking full precautions to not expose myself unnecessary and also uh, exposed but with proper pp and protection i think they can assure their family that we are safe and we will be able to look after ourselves one more thing that we have to remember is is this slide changing now no ma'am not changing 
It's no, not changing. No, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. I think you are forgetting to change the slides, ma'am. Oh no, I am not forgetting, but uh, I can see the slide changing. But you, at your end, it is not changing. No, it's not changing. <laughs> so, slide, can you see which slide? Can so you, you have made beautiful slides, <laughs> but we are not able to appreciate. Them. I know. So which slide are you able to see? Oh, now one cat and a lion is there. Okay. Thank you, Salito. Yeah, uh, cat and lion. Yeah. yeah. Has it changed now? No, no, no ma'am. Oh my goodness! What's I think Shilpa, Shilpa, you take over. I'm changing slides. Uh, ma'am, she will. Yeah, somebody can take over changing the slides and see. Okay, whether, okay. You, uh, I will, I will do once again. Participants, yeah. Are give, me a give me a moment. I think uh, we we are liking your beautiful talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Is it a different slide now? No, ma'am. No, oh, ma'am. The same slide. Same slide. Is it so? Check your self talk is coming. I'm surprised. Why is this happening? Is it? Is it? No, okay. ma'am. Not changing. I'm surprised. Has it changed now? No, no ma'am. Ma it's not changing. Go to the Zoom or uh, no. slide change. My question is, uh, was it changing earlier or it didn't change at all? Oh, it didn't change. The first slide and this is the second slide. My goodness. <laughs> I'm surprised. Indu, go to uh, slide show. Yeah, I am doing show. it every day. Every day I am doing it. Every day. <laughs> I know, but uh, maybe it will work now. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, mm, where am I? Okay. So, is it? Is it? Are you able to see the first slide now? No, ma'am. We can see only your face. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes, I think now I should be able to. <laughs> Much ever try, I uh, mean, time we like try to save, but at the end we. <laughs> Is it now visible? First slide. Okay. Introduction to the background. Very great. Yeah. I'm trying to keep, keep on. Yeah. Come to next, next, next now. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing now. Quickly. I'll Introduction move. to background. Yeah. So uh, is it changing now? No. No. It is oh. not. Introduction to background. Is it? There is something wrong with Zoom this time. Otherwise, this never happens with me. Okay. I'm so, sure there is. Let me so try your uh, lecture is very interesting. I'm really uh, feeling bad that, I mean, you're missing on these slides. They're really... Somebody yeah, is you... singing. I think, ma'am, you continue. So, is it changing now? No, ma'am, it's not changing. Let me, let me. Shall I go out for a minute and come back? You can share, you can share that. I will, I will share to everyone. Ma'am, without this discussion, it doesn't make a diff, uh, any sense. Give me a minute, I'll come back. I'll leave and come back. Your, your, your. Yes, Dr. Mara. Very interesting without the slides. You can. Dr. Mara wants to say something? I'm saying that slides. We can request her to go on. Dr. Mara, you unmute yourself, then you talk. Madam he is saying she can continue without slides. Yeah. Already 10 minutes are we over. Have got, we have got two more speakers. Yeah, she can continue. Yeah. I think she can continue now. Without slides. 
Yeah. Because Zoom is for limited period, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can start with the other one. Yeah, Manju Pallam is also here. Manju, welcome. Ma'am, I am back. Can you Hi, hear me? Hi, Manju. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Asha, ma'am. Nice to see you. Am I visible? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I can see you. Yeah. And is uh, are my slides visible? That's more important than me. The yes, first slide is seen, ma'am. Oh, that's so great. I've changed this slide. Is it visible now? Now only the first slide is going on. Indu, it is not changing. You can continue without slides. Okay, fine. I think I can talk. Continue, yeah. You can yeah, continue. My talking can also help you. I, I mean, uh, you, yes. can take, you can okay. take uh, two, three, four minutes more. So, yeah, now. yeah, quickly, quickly, I'll wind up. Yeah. So, as I was telling you, that we have to really, you know, make sure that we don't overestimate the risk. Another thing that I want to suggest here is to check your self talk. Sometimes we are in habit of, you know, doing negative self talk. So, self talk is the program that you give to your mind and body. So in case if you give this self-talk, oh, situation is very bad, things are not okay, something is going to go wrong, healthcare is going to fail, the country is going to fail. So this is the negative self-talk self -talk that you are doing to yourself that is ultimately going to increase the anxiety in your mind. At the same time, make sure that you keep your media appetite in check. In case if you are watching too many you know, TV news which shows dead bodies and coffin and you know, graveyards, then that's again going to increase anxiety in you. So make sure that you do not, you know, um, you do not watch too many, uh, 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 too much of TV or too many new, new news channels. One more idea that I can suggest to you is to train your rational mind. When you say you, you, uh, you know, rational mind, then you actually need to work on your, on yourself where you actually find out things that are bothering you. Things that are bothering you, if you'll make a list of it and see things over which you have direct control, simply focus all your energy on the things over which you have direct control. There will be n number of things. For example, overall infection rate is increasing. Others are not taking precaution. Patients and public are not handling corona. All this may be true, but we have no direct control over it. On the other side, taking all precautions, explaining to the patients who are coming, you know, coming across you to follow the precautions, all that is in direct control. So we can focus our energy on the things that are doable over which we have direct control. So uh, you will find out there are things which are in your control and there are things that are not in your control. So very mindfully, we need to focus on the things that we can you know, uh, uh, handle and manage. At the same time, we need to confront our fears, especially anxiety and phobias. They are a result of excessive fear to a very small trigger. So we really need to confront our fear, fear by logically, rationally addressing it, challenging it. That's another way that can help people to stay calm. Stay in the company of people who are positive and progressive because sometimes when people are not uh, in their normal state, they have a tendency to infect others or contaminate others. So make sure that you are not in the company of people who are anxiety prone or who are, you know, likely to uh, likely to in, uh, disturb your state of mind. Also, at workplace, very consciously you have to stay calm and cheerful. Although some of you may think that I am talking something very theoretical, but Peace and calmness is something that is mindfully created. It will never happen on its own. So you have to mindfully create peace and you know happiness and cheerfulness at workplace because if you're stressful, it's going to affect your whole environment and everybody is going to get into the same mood. So very mindfully, we have to avoid being aggressive and argumentative at workplace. Try to create a good work environment, pleasant environment, stay cheerful, look after each other, be cooperative. And that's going to really improve your mental strength to deal with the crisis situation. 
being in touch with your family and loved one is very important because even if you are not able to meet them you can talk to them over phone thankfully we have so many ways to connect with the family video calling or maybe you know uh, talking over the phone but whenever you connect with them make sure that you are in a positive state of mind if you are depressed or feeling low or anxious your family is going to really really get disturbed because of this state of mind connecting with your family and friends is all the more important because when you connect with them you feel good you feel better and you release a different set of hormones which improve your immunity and make you feel better on the other side if you're depressed feeling low you release a different set of hormone called stress hormones which puts your body in the negative gear then your chances of you know being anxious and uh, upset are going to be higher and also your immunity to disease also would go down so it's very important to stay in touch with your family in a cheerful mood mindfully you have to do it so quickly last two slides i think some important tips that i would like to give you please ensure that you get 6 to 8 hours of sleep on a regular basis sleep is a biological need do not compromise on sleep because all your mental and physical wear and tear is going to take place during sleep so make sure that you catch enough sleep even if you're not able to sleep at one go 6 to 8 hours make sure that you 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 get at least you know in two bits or three bits but you must take that rest three meals a day means three meals a day please do not compromise on food take nutritious diet take well balanced diet do not compromise on your meals or on your food even if you are not hungry make sure that you take some nutritious food because patient care is a very laborious tiring job exhausting job you cannot put your car on the highway without taking your tank full similarly make sure that you eat enough before you go for your uh, workplace especially when we are getting to here for good 6 to 8 hours you are not even taking water or you are not able to eat anything so all the more important that you take your meals properly take all precautions take all precautions and pp to yourself and your team so that you are safe and your team is also safe i'm reminding again please stay mindfully calm and no negative thinking the moment there is a negative thought ask three question is this thought true is this thought good is this thought helpful the moment you will ask yourself this question you will get an answer for example if i'm worried that i might get get infection then my first question to me will be is this thought true no it hasn't happened so this is false is it a good thought no it's a bad thought it's making me feel bad so it's not a good thought third is it helpful no it is not helpful it is distressing me it is upsetting me so all the more important that i get rid of this thought so any negative thought when it doesn't pass through these three questions please delete it immediately automatically stop complaining and blaming <coughs> we all have a tendency to talk negative negative about media about police about doctors about system about country don't do this this is not going to help you this is further going to reduce your you know uh, resilience and your strength to deal with this situation abdominal breathing is a very helpful way to improve your to control your anxiety if you're familiar with abdominal breathing please make sure that you do abdominal breathing at least two to three times in a day if you are not familiar with abdominal breathing at least deep breathing exercises four to five times in a day four to five breaths at a time wonderful way of reducing your anxiety your attitude plays a very big role if what you are doing if you are proud of it your mindset will be altogether different on the other side if you are not happy doing what you are doing if you are unhappy you are complaining you are sad it's again going to put you in the negative gear and it's going to definitely affect your health how you look at your job is going to decide where you place yourself i'm going to end my story uh, the whole discussion here with a very small story uh, there was a jungle fire huge jungle fire and uh, all birds and animals from the jungle started running out of the jungle to save their life there was a small bird small bird it picked little water from a water body nearby and threw on the fire everybody started laughing at the at the bird saying do you think this water is going to extinguish the fire she said no i know it's not going to extinguish the fire but when the history will be written i will be called a warrior and you will be called a spectator so choice is yours whether you want to be called as a spectator or you want to be called as a warrior 
stay safe, stay happy, stay cheerful. This is something that you have to create mindfully. It will not happen on its own. It's a state of mind that is going to directly affect your physical, mental, social, spiritual health. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Indra. Thank you so much. And we are surely to become the warrior. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, you agree with me, all of you sitting uh -huh. over here? Yes. We are yes, going to become the warrier. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma People with, with the, all those masks and hospital duties and all are sitting here, they are all the warriors. We are all the warriors. We are going to win. Yeah? Yes, so thank you so much, Dr. Indu, for highlighting such a beautiful talk. Okay, I wish I could show you the uh, this thing, but never mind. I think my talk compensated for it. Well, yeah, your talk was quite good, understandable, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, Premati, call the other speaker, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for the enlightening speech. Uh, our third speaker is all of our favorite, that is uh, Dr. Nija Sweet, ma'am. Ma'am will be uh, speaking on the topic infection control and uh, biomedical waste management. I'll just give a brief introduction about ma'am. As we all know, ma'am has been a regular uh, speaker of our school. Uh, ma'am has completed her PhD from JNU, uh, her uh, master's and BSc both from Delhi University. Ma'am has a, a fellowship in Foundation of Advancement of International Medical Education and Research from Regional Institute CMCL Ludhiana. Uh, Ma'am is currently working as a professor in Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. Ma'am has worked for 22 years under the Director of Health Services, Delhi Government. Uh, uh, Ma'am is uh, uh, specialized in public health nursing. Ma'am has written various research papers in national, international journal, in books. Ma'am has written various chapters. It's uncountable if I start uh, counting the chapters what Ma'am has written. Uh, so I welcome you, ma'am, for another session at Calcutta University School of Nursing. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much. You. And I will not take much. Lady requested Dr. Abdesh to increase our time 15 minutes more. Doctor, if uh, Dr. Abdesh is sitting here. Yeah, Dr. Abdesh, you are here. Dr. Abdesh. Okay. My slides are visible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I will not take much time uh, because uh, Professor Asha Qureshi also has to speak uh, after me. I will take, uh, it's, uh, my topic is on infection control practices and biomedical waste management. Already, my first speaker has given you lots of uh, insight about the infection control. I will just go on the basic aspects. Uh, infection prevention and control is a scientific approach and a practical solution designed to prevent harm caused by infection to patients and health workers. It is grounded in infectious diseases, epidemiology, social science, and health system strengthening. IPC occupies a unique position in the field of patient safety and quality of universal health coverage. No country, no healthcare facility, even within the most advanced and sophisticated healthcare system can claim to be free of the problems of healthcare associated infections. We have seen this in the case of COVID-19, how all the developed countries, developing countries are being affected by the COVID-19. The need of having IPC program nationally and at the facility level is clearly enforced by the international and national agencies. The WHO has given key technical areas of work. I will just uh, highlight the important ones, that is hand hygiene, prevention of surgical site, IPC to combat antimicrobial resistance, infection safety, burden of healthcare associated infections, IPC, country capacity building, prevention of sepsis, catheter associated bloodstream infections, COVID-19, quarantine, isolation, standard precautions, and PPE. Now, what are standard precautions? I think all of you know the standard precautions are meant to reduce the risk of transmission of blood-borne and other pathogens from both recognized and unrecognized sources. They are basic level of infection control precautions, which are to be used at a minimum in the care of all patients. 
most important, especially in the case of COVID-19, hand hygiene is a major component of standard precautions. I will not go in detail of these things. Already it is being covered. Use of personal protective equipment should be guided by risk assessment and the extent of contact anticipated. And third is respiratory hygiene and the cuff etiquette, especially in the cases of it was seen in the SARS also and in the COVID pandemic also. Then the most is your mask wearing and the distancing. These two important things are being very important. If you see, these are the government of India guidelines, which are being revised one. I think all of you can go through this. This is updated on the 15th May at the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare website, where they give you setting, activity, risk level, and recommended PPE. <laughs> and as we know, the PPE is all over the world. There is a shortage of PPE, and local manufacturing is going on. But we have to see that it is being used rationally. There were many incidences when PPE was not used rationally. In the beginning, the PPE was used irrationally. And when it was required by the health professionals, it was not available. And that actually has led to the death of many doctors and nurses and the health workers all over the world. So you can go through this. I will share all these uh, documents through email to Professor Qureshi. These are the latest guidelines. I think all of you should have uh, the vision. Then points to remember using PPE, standard precautions to be followed at all times. PPE yeah. are not alternative to basic preventive public health measures. That yeah. is your hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette. Allow and follow the laid down protocols, how to dispose of and use the yeah. PPE. That is very important. If you see That's your right. NCDC guidelines, these are also very important to see guidelines because these are all our Indian guidelines which need to be followed by the all the uh, <laughs> health professionals who are working. This also I will share. This will give you a full vision. Who is at risk? If you see, it is everyone. Starting from the, your sanitary worker, Nurses, doctors, patients, relatives, everyone is at risk. So what is the benefit of IPC? It's protecting yourself, protecting your patient, protecting your family and community and environment. IPC goals, I think all of you know that. I will not go through this. This is a document which is given by your NCDC where you will get all the detailed information. Now I will go to biomedical waste management which I will give you the most important aspect, which are being amended due to COVID-19. Healthcare facility having isolation wards for COVID-19 need to follow the biomedical waste management guidelines to ensure safe handling and disposal of biomedical waste. These are the guidelines available. These are by the your CD. You can see here guidelines for handling treatment and disposal of waste generated during treatment, diagnosis, quarantine, COVID-19 patient, which is given by April in April uh, 2020 by the Central Pollution Control Board. This is being this needs to be followed by all the institutions all over the India. The main highlights of this is keep. Separate color-coded bins, bags, containers in wards maintain proper segregation of waste as per the Biomedical Waste Management Rules 2016, which were amended again in 2018. There were few amendments. And for during the COVID in the April 2020, there were amendments. So these amendments are to be followed in all the institutions. Double layered bag or using two bags should be used for collection of waste from COVID-19 isolation ward so as to ensure adequate strength and no leaks. Collect and store biomedical waste separately prior to handing over to the collecting facility. Use a dedicated collection bin labeled as COVID-19 to store COVID-19 waste and keep separately in a temporary storage room prior to handing over to the authorized staff. Biomedical waste collected in isolation ward 
can also be lifted directly from the wards into the collection van. It again depends upon the institution policy. So always remember, follow your institutional guidelines, although they are being made on the basis of these guidelines only. In addition to mandatory label, bag, containers used for collecting biomedical waste, it should be labeled already. I have told you this is very important. This is being repeated again and again. Label the COVID-19 waste. This will help the staff to identify the waste easily for priority treatment and disposal. And general waste not having contamination should be disposed of as solid waste as per the guidelines. Now, your IPC team in the hospital should maintain a separate record which is generated by the COVID-19 isolation board. This is very essential. Use dedicated trolley and collection bins in COVID-19 isolation wards. The inner and outer surface of the containers, bin, trolleys used for storage of COVID-19 waste should be disinfected with one parcel sodium hypochlorite solution daily. Report opening of operation of COVID-19 ward or any ICU for the COVID patient to your IPC team in the hospital, state pollution board, your district IDSP team and the collection facility. Because all these people are monitoring the cases, they will provide all the possible help also. Depute dedicated sanitary staff separately for biomedical waste and general solid waste so that waste can be collected and transferred in time. General solid waste, that is household waste generated from quarantine centers or camp should be handed over to waste collection identified by your urban local bodies. This again depends which are the urban bodies which are being identified by the specific state or as per the local method of disposing the general body, solid waste. Bio waste, biomedical waste, if any generated from quarantine centers or camps, should be collected separately in the yellow color pack. These are again the NCDC IPC guidelines. You can go through this. These are the important links I have given you. These are from WHO. These links are very useful. And these are from Government of India and the NPC, NP, uh, NCDC. I hope. In a nutshell, because the time is short, I don't want that Professor Qureshi should be deprived of, of the time as a host also. I have given you in a nutshell, but I will share all the documents which are related to this and you can go through. Still, if you have any question, you can personally also, you can contact me. Thank you, Dr. Qureshi, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neeja Suhut. Thank you so much. I think we have got now nine minutes left to us. I will try to finish my talk within nine minutes because we have got another, uh, you know, uh, meeting at three uh, thirty sharp. So I think I request Prempati uh, to share my slides. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So you're, before that, uh, I will just tell you that uh, COVID nineteen. I'm going to talk about the meat buster given by WHO guidelines. They are currently, as you know, no drug licensed for the treatment or prevention uh, of COVID-19. Ma'am, Nija, ma'am ma has to stop the screen share, then I can do. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. Okay, okay. Is it okay now? Uh, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, thank you. Yeah, I can okay. start now. I can start. You can, keep, you can share that slide in between, okay? Now, I was talking to you that there are currently no drug licensed for the treatment of prevention of COVID-19, whereas several drug styles are going on. And there is currently no proof that hydroxychloroquine, you know, I, I just want to clear to the public that many people are taking hydroxychloroquine on their own and uh, it is not recommended by the WHO. And they say that instead of uh, prevention, it is giving more harm and its misuse of hydroxychloroquine can cause serious life-threatening side effects. So right now, our aim is to keep yourself hale and healthy and 
yourself healthy and the people at community level it is your duty to keep them also safe and healthy there are certain common myths which who has explored are presented here before you so number first myth is slide please oh, yes ma'am it was just one minute yeah uh Yeah, but you come to the next slide, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. I think it is covered by something. You know, something is going wrong. So you can just expand it. Uh, Sh uh, Shilpa. Where is Shilpa? Shilpa. So yes, let us let us talk about coronavirus outbreak yes. myth versus fact. Can you share it, please, one? Yes, ma'am. Up close, कर दीजिए आप लोग. Yeah, up close. Sir. I can see Manju Palam. I'm so happy to see you. Manju, you are in England now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm so happy to see you as well, ma'am. Good to I'm see Manju. you. Yeah. My pleasure to be with you, ma'am. So. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so first, I'm just going to just skip to it. You all of you know, but it is very, very necessary to reinforce all these things because once we are uh, not knowing the facts and we are following the myths, you know, then we we forget to take other precautions which are necessary to prevent the coronavirus. So first myth is the cold. Please come to the previous slide. The cold weather and snow can kill the new coronavirus. The fact is. according to the who health organization there is no reason to believe that cold weather can kill the new coronavirus or other diseases this is because the normal human body temperature remains around 36.5 to 37 degree regardless of the external temperature of the weather so you have to forget that cold weather can and snow can kill new coronavirus it is Meat. Next, vitamin C supplement. Vitamin C supplement will stop you from catching COVID. No, fact is that researchers have yet to find any evidence that vitamin C supplement can render people immune to COVID-19 infection. But if you are taking COVID-19, your immunity is enhanced for catching the other illnesses and all. So don't stop taking vitamin C, but there is no evidence that vitamin c alone can you know prevent the coronavirus next another myth is the new coronavirus can be transmitted to mosquito bites and flies the fact is that to date there has been no information no evidence to suggest that the new coronavirus could be transmitted by mosquito or flies the new coronavirus is a respiratory virus which spread primarily through droplet generated when an infected person cough or sneeze or through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose to protect yourself clean your hands frequently with the alcohol based hand uh, and wash wash them with soap and water as to avoid close contact with anyone who is coughing and sneezing so it the fact is that coronavirus do not spread by the bite of mosquito and the flies next bit drinking silver can kill stain of coronavirus there are certain myths have come you put the silver coin you know in the water and drink that water you know this was in america this was uh, you know a tell uh, tell evangelist has all falsely claimed colloidal uh, water which is particles of matter suspended in a liquid can kill some stain of coronavirus which is not right which is not true It will, it will produce kidney damage rather next kids cannot uh, catch coronavirus do you think that kids cannot wash uh, catch coronavirus 
we have seen that kids are catching coronavirus. There are various kids died, even six-month kids died with coronavirus. So children can definitely catch coronavirus. The fact is that, though initial reports suggest, initial reports suggest fewer cases in children compared with the adult. However, more recent studies suggest children are as likely as adults to become infected with new coronavirus. Next. Drinking, drink, okay. There is another myth. A vaccine to cure COVID-19 is available. There are many things, many, many YouTubes you can see. So many, uh, we have prepared the vaccine and uh, homeopathic and Yunani and so many things, myths are coming. You know, that they have prepared the coronavirus. So far from WHO, currently there is no vaccine for the new coronavirus. Scientists have already begun working on one but developing a vaccine that is safe and effective in human, bring, uh, human beings will take many months still. Next, please. Drinking water can help prevent COVID-19. Drinking water can help you for various other things and all. Keep your kidney clean, keep you detoxified, keep you healthy, you know. But there is no evidence that, that drinking plenty of water will prevent coronavirus. Next, please. Ultraviolet disinfection lamp can kill the new coronavirus. Many people have purchased the ultraviolet disinfection lamp. The fact is, the UV lamp should not be used to sterilize hands or other areas of the skin as the ultraviolet radiation can cause skin irritation. So it will harm you. It will not give you any protection or prevention. Next. Another one myth is the virus is just a mutated form of a common cold. They say, okay, like common cold, like flu and influenza, this is also a common cold virus. The fact is, no, it is not. Coronavirus is a large family of viruses that includes many different diseases like SARS, cov 2 does share uh, similarities with other coronavirus, four of which can cause the common cold. So this is one of the uh, one of the dangerous virus so far. Next. Another myth is if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, you are healthy. There are many yogis and there are many, uh, you know, uh, you know, naturopathy and various yoga people. They are telling that hold your breath. And if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, you are you cannot get the coronavirus. According to expert, the 10 second test being shared online would not be a reliable way to determine whether someone has a virus or not. This approach may be helpful in identifying person with more serious lung disease like COPD, but it will not identify persons with which are who are infected and have mild to no symptom. Okay. Now many of the people say if you who can identify that if you cannot hold your breath, if you are taking the deep breath, cannot hold it and have cough, you are suffering with corona. That also is a myth. And fact is that, that this is not this. Next. Coronavirus is not more dangerous than the seasonal flu. While most coronavirus cases will be mild and patients will exhibit nothing more than seasonal flu symptoms. The respiratory disease has a higher mortality rate and is far more serious at 1% fatality rate, COVID-19 is about 10 times deadlier than the seasonal flu or the influenza virus. Next, please. Virus does not survive in warm weather or in the sun. This is also a myth. Many people are sitting in the sun. Many people sitting in the sun will give you vitamin D. Sitting in the sun is okay, but no evidence has been shown so far that with the limited research available on the new coronavirus about sitting in the sun. Experts are unsure how the virus will react in warmer weather. Any predictions are based only on the SARS and MERS epidemics. However, the virus is already prevent, uh, in, uh, prevalent in, uh, in hot, uh, hotter countries like Singapore and Australia. One study from the Harvard Medical School has suggested 
that the virus has the potential to continue spreading across a range of temperature and humidity level in China and various other countries. Hand dryers are effective in killing the new coronavirus. You know? No, that is also the fact is that it is myth. And the fact is, as per the information from the World Health Organization, hand dryers are not effective in killing the COVID-19. COVID to protect yourself against the new coronavirus, you should frequently clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Once your hands are clean, you should dry them thoroughly by using paper towel or a warm air dryer. Eating garlic has prevent infection and new coronavirus. Of course, it is a myth for coronavirus, but eating garlic can give you various other benefits for various other problems. Garlic is a healthy food that may have some antimicrobial property. However, there is no evidence from the current outbreak that eating garlic has protected people from the new coronavirus. Receiving a letter or package from the infected area is unsafe. We are so phobic. Anything comes, you know, we are, we are getting the online vegetables, online things and all. We keep them outside, you know, we keep them outside in the sun and all and then spray them and disinfect them and all. So, <coughs> WHO says that this is also a myth. People receiving such packages are not at the risk of contracting infection because of poor survivability of these coronavirus on surfaces. There is likely very low risk of spread from products or packages that are shipped over a period of days or weeks at ambient temperatures. So the, the virus, if it is there, also escapes. Taking a hot water bath can prevent the new coronavirus. Also, it is not true. The fact is your body, normal body temperature remains around 36 to 37, regardless of temperature of your bath or shower. The best way to protect yourself against COVID-19 is by frequently cleaning your hands and, of course, taking bath every day. Next. New coronavirus only affects older people. The fact of the effect is that people of all ages can be infected by the new coronavirus, older people and people with pre-existing medical conditions such as asthma, diabetic, heart disease, appear to be more vulnerable to become severely ill with the virus. Antibiotics are effective in preventing and treating the new coronavirus. You know, many people are taking their antibiotics on their own when they have sore throat and itching and all, and without thinking, normal infection and all will go away, bacterial infection. But coronavirus antibiotics do not act on the coronavirus. The fact is, no antibiotic do not work against virus, only they are or they only work on bacteria. The new coronavirus is a virus, and therefore the antibiotic should not be used as a means of prevention of treatment. However, if you are hospitalized for 2019 COVID, you may receive antibiotics because bacterial co-infection, which is possible due to coronavirus. New coronavirus only affects older people. I think that has been done. Thermal scanner can easily detect people infected with the new coronavirus. Now, thermal scanners are effective in detecting people who have developed a fever only. Okay, they, if the fever, if if a body has a higher fever or temperature because of infection with the new coronavirus, it can only detect fever. It cannot detect that you are suffering with fever with, due to coronavirus. However, they cannot detect people who are infected but are not yet sick with fever. This is because it takes between two and ten days before people who are infected become sick and develop a fever. Next, please. Spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body will kill coronavirus. This is many people have been. 
you know, they keep on, you know, squeezing that, uh, you know, spray and all, alcohol spray. Some people drink spray, you know, uh, drink alcohol because they say alcohol rub will kill coronavirus. So they consume alcohol also. So that is also not, not a fact, it is a myth. According to WHO, spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body will not kill virus that have already entered your body. Spraying such substances can be harmful to clothes or mucous membrane, that is eyes, mouth, and nasal mucous membrane. Regularly rinsing your nose with saline can help prevent infection with the new coronavirus. Of course, saline goggle, we are used to it. Whenever we have, whenever we have, uh, uh, you know, any uh, problem, uh, uh, short throat or any infection and all, we take uh, saline goggle and all. But there is no evidence that regularly rinsing the nose or saline has protected people from infection with the new coronavirus. Vaccine against pneumonia can protect you against the coronavirus. This is also not fact. Vaccine against pneumonia, such as pneumococcal vaccine and hemophilus influenza B vaccine, do not provide any protection against the new coronavirus. The virus is so new and different that it needs its own vaccine. Researchers are trying to develop a vaccine against COVID-19 and WHO is supporting their efforts. Gargling warm saline water also can prevent coronavirus. Of course, not respiratory viruses are not impacted by salt water. Data on such conditions show some claim that gargling with bleach or ethanol can help. But that is also not right. This is very dangerous. Despite claims that warm water can, can uh, deactivate the virus or that avoiding ice cream can help, neither cold or hot temperature can kill the virus, says the WHO experts. You should not breastfeed your baby if you are infected with COVID-19. Do you think so? Fact is, that as per the WHO, a woman with COVID-19 should be supported to breastfeed safely, hold her own newborn skin-to-skin -skin contact, and share a room with her baby. The baby, who has already been exposed to the coronavirus by the mother, will benefit most from the direct continued breastfeeding. This is because breast milk provides protection against many illnesses and strengthens the baby's immune function. Next, please. So, thank you so much. Now, if you enlarge this picture, what, what do you see? Just, just uh, enlarge this? Yes. So, what, what is this? Can you, can, can you speak? What is this? So, Namaskar. Yeah. Namaskar. 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 Or handshake mat kariye. Okay? So, these are all the namaskar. Namaskar, sasirikar, and adab. Okay? No handshaking, no hugs. So, now with this, I just would uh, now, uh, uh, we can understand all the facts and myths and all. I think this everybody knows. But reinforces is reinforcement is very very important. You know, I'm just re reminding you all those myths and all. So by understanding these facts, I can again emphasize that the disease can only be prevented. There is no medicine. There is no prevention. So as Manju Randapani has very high, very rightly said, fourth thing: social distancing, two meter. In the beginning, it was two feet. You know, when the first first case came, it was two weeks. After that, now it has become two, two, two meters. Do gaj ki duri. Our prime, honorable prime minister mm -hmm. ne bula hai, do gaj ki duri rakhiye. Clean and disinfect objects and surfaces that may have germ. Wash your hands with soap and water. Again, I'm reminding you, if there is old person in the house with, uh, with other pre-morbid condition, family members to take care of them. So this misformation, misinformation, is like a virus. It is more than like a virus, you know. It is more, more bigger virus than the coronavirus itself. If you are not informed properly and adequately, you know, uh, you can uh, you can always should try to get the authentic, uh, you know, CDC guideline, WHO guideline, 
ICMR guidelines, Government of India guidelines, Indian guidelines, but your own ideologies, which you which are separating various myths and all, should should be kept with you only, not for spreading. You can try it on yourself. Okay, so thank you so much for the myths. I think everybody will take care of you. Take care and take uh, keep safe, keep healthy, take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Kasiriyakar, namaskar. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for such a good uh, session. Last, uh, I want to give just a word of thanks. I want to thank all the speakers uh, for the timely presence and for delivering the. Uh, the the session to our students and faculty. I would like to thank Dr. Manju Nandapani, ma'am, Dr. Neja Sood, Dr. Anju Neja. I will extend my heart that. Uh, uh, yes, the main party just giving chance to Mrs. Handa to speak. Just unmute me. Unmute Mrs. Handa. Uh, Shilpa, can you do that? Mrs. Yes. Handa can unmute. Mrs. Handa, Asha Shodri also want to ask something. Till that time, it is working. Keep on going. So, Mrs. Handa, please unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the whole very informative uh, webinar has been there, and we have, of course, you know, quite a bit because all the time this is coming on the various social media, and everybody is learning. But the specifically, you know, the um, it was pointed out that what are the uh, most important points which we always tend to neglect, we should not neglect it. And, and we nurses, if we understand, we know it, we can educate all the others. And if we take the pre uh, precaution to prevent, I'm sure that we'll be able to fight out coronavirus very, very soon. And nurses are the warriors, are the frontline workers, and they are the ones who are going to be very, uh, uh, definitely be successful in preventing and further spreading of the coronavirus. All the best to everybody. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Asha, and I have. Prempati, ma'am, kindly wind up yeah, another session. Kindly wind up, Prempati, ma'am, please. Kind request. One, yes. Only one question, please. From Dr. Neesu. Asha Chaudhary, yeah, you can ask something. She is uh -huh. 